audible and visible let me know then we'll start let me confirm am i audible my audible and visible let me know Welcome to Earn Academy Future Doctor. I am myself Dr. Deepa Sarya. I am MD PhD Physiology and I am your faculty for Physiology. So let me explain in brief within five minutes our, about our subscription. Hello, welcome to, welcome all, welcome to my class. So let me explain in brief uh, about our subscription and other patterns. Okay? So uh, one of the announcement here is we are providing you EG notes. For the subscribers okay so comprehensive notes for the next curated for the live test the on academy educator from of the on academy educators well structured notes are provided so for the same next is uh, another is uh, you we have one more announcement that if you are taking one year subscription you will get six months subscription so subscribe now use my code 50 10 Okay, and you will get 10 for, for discount on all the subscriptions. Okay. Uh, next is uh, about our subscription. One that is plus subscription here. Uh, who's the best from the best? Here your access to both live as well as recorded classes. You can study on the device of your choice. You can learn from India's top educators for your medical exams. You can access Christian Bank, which is having more than 5,000 questions. You can compete in the live test and quiz. And second, that is our iconic subscription. Here, your access to the best from two of the best. And these are these two. One, that is on Academy and Trap Ladder. With on Academy, all the features I have explained here. And uh, second one, that is on Academy and Trap Ladder with Trap Ladder. Here, here, you can have clinical and integrated essentials, video lectures from the Information Bank 3 with active guidance system tags and more rapid revision, snapshots and results and twenty. This is our neat PG toppers and FMGE toppers. We also have added features in the special class. We made the class interactive and live. We have added the feature of poll for the learner. Raise your hand. You never miss a class as you are always not right for the class. You can get lecture notes. PDF notes are also provided. And you can access the class at anywhere and at any time. Another, uh, we have in the previous year question batch. That is starting from 2nd March, May, in for two months. FMG 2022 Comprehensive Best started from March, May, 2nd for two months. Focus FMG Comprehensive Best from March 2nd to November 2nd, nine months. Target Next 2023 Subject Wise Best started from March 2nd for one year. Uh, target uh, need PG 2022 all educator revision batch that is from May 21st. Okay, that is uh, second um, for May 21st, that is from 2nd March to 2nd. Okay. Need PG 2022 all educator revision batch started uh, for three months and need PG 2020 ultra fast revision batch started from back. Need PG 2022 previous year question batch started from to have for 15 days and need 2022 image based question batch started from 15 days. Focus FMG December 2022 comprehensive batch for nine months from 16 to October 20. And uh, Focus FMG 2022 comprehensive batch back to May 20. These are about subscription charges plus as well as iconic. You can go for any, you can use the mobile and you can. Subscribe if you my code this week can you will ten percent on each and every subject. Okay. Uh, another uh, important announcement: you can take a quiz. We have an option of take a quiz on the app. You can see here how to take a quiz. The quiz option. Okay. I have created a quiz so you can join a quiz. 
by that option and you can use this code this is code for today's on cell physiology 76976 use this code and you can join the okay, fine this way now let us start our today's class Today's class, one of the very important topic from cardiovascular system we are going to take and that is cardiac output. So many students, they are making mistakes so many times uh, in cardiac output, cardiac index. There are so many other terminologies getting confused. So first of all, I'll explain which are the confusing terminologies. Cardiac output, one. Second, that is stroke volume. Those who are watching me either live or recorded. Please mind this uh, well, okay? So cardiac output, stroke volume, cardiac index, and cardiac reserve. These are four terminologies. Very, very confusing, okay? So don't get confused today. If you are there with me throughout the class, you will definitely clear your all the confusions as well as you can thoroughly prepare the topic. Okay? So welcome to my class, those who are there with me, as well as those who are watching me. Uh, the streamed video also if you are watching then also that will be very very helpful to you okay let us start <laughs> let us start with the definition now what is cardiac output you must have learned in your lower standards also cardiac output cardiac means heart output means out okay so definition that is cardiac output let us define it is the volume of blood Pumped out by heart. Pumped out by heart. Per minute. Very important word here is per minute. So whenever anybody is asking you the definition or in your exams or <clears throat> in your MCQ, if you have found that the question, what is cardiac output? Very important word here that is per minute. So cardiac output that is volume of the blood pumped out by heart per minute okay now cardiac output our heart is a pump so our heart pumps the same amount of blood which is coming to it and the blood coming to heart is equal to venous return okay returning okay? so now let us define venous return it is the volume of blood Flowing from veins to from veins heart. Here, very important thing is here also you have to write down per minute. Okay, so both are equal. <coughs> heart pumps the same amount of blood which is coming to it. Okay, heart gets five liter blood. Heart pumps five liter. So venous return is also around five to six liters. Cardiac output is also 5 to 6 liters. Very important. Is it clear? Okay. Now, let us continue with the next. Now, so as I told you, in healthy individuals, venous return is equal to cardiac output. Okay. So, now, another very important and confusing terminology that is students are facing that is stroke volume. What is stroke volume? I will explain you easily. Stroke. Hum log bolte na, Sachin ne achha stroke mara. Ya Kohli ne achha. What is stroke? Stroke that is one. One effort. Same thing is for heart. Stroke means one beat. So easy way you can remember. If you remember the stroke of your favorite, ah, uh, this cricketer. Same way. Stroke volume. What is stroke volume? It is, now I will define it. Volume of blood. So, whenever the word stroke comes, means single effort. Sachin stroke mara, to ek bar mein stroke. Not he or she, he is not getting second chance. The same thing. Heart means volume of blood pumped by heart. Blood pumped by heart. Very important thing. Per stroke means heart ka stroke kya hota hai? Per beat. That is equal to stroke volume. Okay. <clears throat> now, normal stroke volume is about. Kitna pump kar hai blood hamara. 
heart 70 to 80 ml okay for very important word here is beat for beat okay am i clear so don't get confused those who are joining newly i am repeating for those students but if you are watching me live or you are viewing streamed videos just go through all this terminology is very important cardiac output what is cardiac output volume of blood pumped by heart per minute one minute okay and heart is our important efficient pump so heart is uh, pumping the blood same amount which is coming to it so that is equal to venous return okay fine and stroke volume as i told you volume of blood pumped by heart per beat single stroke okay fine now so how to calculate cardiac output ek stroke mein agar heart hamara 70 ml pump kar raha hai aur ek minute mein kitne stroke maar raha hai heart that is equal to heart rate so cardiac output is equal to stroke volume multiplied by heart rate the stroke volume is our 70 ml suppose and heart rate is 72 so your cardiac output is about 5 liters 5 to 6 liters per minute okay now normally very important thing here is in healthy individual okay right and left ventricles they, their output both of them they are pumping same amount of blood okay 5 liters is pumped by right ventricle and 5 liter by left ventricle. So you may have now confusion that right ventricle pumps in the lungs and left ventricle in the circulation. Circulation is so big. But pulmonary circulation, the vessels are less resistant. It can accommodate this much 5 liter. Yeah? This is very important thing here is to be clear. Now, next thing here we will discuss that is how the cardiac output is affected that is affected one as i told you stroke volume okay now the stroke volume heart is giving stroke this stroke volume how much volume heart is pumping that is determined by end diastolic volume agar heart ke paas blood aai nahi raha hai pump kaise karega so amount of blood pumped by heart per beat that is equal to stroke volume but this is affected by end diastolic volume very important terminology the name itself suggests at the end of diastole okay at the end of diastole heart mein kitna blood rahega i think you all are knowing around 120 to 140 ml of blood okay if your end diastolic volume is more your stroke volume would be more because heart has more blood heart will pump more blood okay so this end diastolic volume affects the stroke but here end systolic volume it is negatively affected with the stroke volume how we will discuss suppose your end diastolic volume increase so what happens stroke volume increase okay second thing if your after load is increased, after load means heart has to pump against the load. What happens? Your stroke volume decreases. Suppose somebody has hypertension okay, and heart is pumping against rigid aorta or wall. So what happens to stroke volume? It decreases. And as the stroke volume decreases, your end system systolic volume increases and systolic volume means volume of the blood remains at the end of systole normal and systolic volume is 50 ml but if heart cannot pump what happens and systolic volume okay. next is if there is increased force of contraction heart is contracting with a force so what happens heart is contracting forcefully that is known as inotropic effect we have discussed inotropic effect i know sorry inotropic chronotropic if you can remember in the first class if you don't remember just go to my first class of cps chromotropic and bathmotropic effect 
I just repeat for you so you can not to just go through that class. Inotropic, I told you the mnemonic also. IF, if, force of contraction. So you can remember. Chronology, that is heart rate. Inotropic means increase. Force of contraction, chronotropic means increase. The heart rate, dromotropic. Easy to remember DC, conductivity of the heart. Okay. And bathmotropic, that is excitability. So when inotropic is increased, force of contraction of the heart increases, what happens? Your and systolic volume decreases. First stroke volume increases. Okay. Fine. Now, so this is one factor that affects your cardiac output. One is your stroke volume. Second one that is heart rate. Okay, what is heart rate? Heart rate, as we all know, we are measuring in feet per minute. Okay, how many beats per minute? Okay, under normal condition, our heart rate is between 60 to 100 beats per minute. Okay, this one. Now, when heart rate increases, what happens? Temporarily, your cardiac output increases. Your cardiac output increases, but other effect of increasing the heart rate. What happens when heart rate increases? Heart gets less time for relaxing, okay? less time for diastole, and as less time for diastole, then what happens? Heart is not able to pump much blood, so stroke volume decreases. Okay, so less time. For the diastole, less is the end diastolic volume and less is the stroke volume. So, ultimately, your cardiac output is So, initially it is raised, but later on it will explain in. Third factor that determines your cardiac output, you can see here, cardiac output is equal to venous return. We have discussed. Okay? Heart is just a pump. How much blood comes to heart? It is pumping the same blood. Okay, so cardiac output, if your cardiac output is 5 to 6 liters per minute, your venous return must be 5 to 6 liters per minute. Okay? So this is your equal, always one of the important factors to regulate cardiac output. Okay? Now, next very important uh, definition again. So many times the question is asked, cardiac index. What is cardiac index? Because suppose if I want to uh, this compare cardiac output of adult and a child, what happens? Definitely cardiac output of the child is less. So how can, can we say that heart of the child is not pumping properly? So what we have suggested second that is cardiac index. Now, what is this cardiac index? Easy to definition is cardiac output divided by body surface area. Okay, this is your cardiac index. Okay, so I, I will explain. Suppose your cardiac output, you can see here, 4.8 liter or simply speaking, 5 liters. You can see here, divide it with the body surface area, 1.7. And you will get your cardiac index. So normal value for cardiac index is around 3 liters or 3.2 per minute per meter square body surface area okay this is normal value now how it helps because as i told you cardiac output of adult and child are different but if we are calculating cardiac index good morning beta kishore singh welcome to my class so cardiac index that is equal for adult as well as child Okay, so you can compare easily efficiency of the heart. Why? Because suppose newborn baby's cardiac output is 500 ml only, but the body surface area also would be not 1.7, that is 0.17 only. So cardiac index would be same for newborn baby as well as for adult. So you can easily compare this for both, both the adult as well as newborn as well as person having suppose one person is having 80 kg weight other person is having 50 kg weight so definitely blood volume of this person is suppose blood volume of this person is normal blood volume that is 70 ml per kg 
so that would be five to six liters and this up if suppose they are talking about three to four liters so cardiac output of lean individual is three to four liter and the bodybuilder is five to six liters per minute so you can say that this is the heart of this lean individual is not working no so for that what we have to do is we have to calculate cardiac index okay fine next is cardiac reserve very important terminal reserve what is reserve that is the capacity of our body to work in emergency okay easy example suppose hamara jo active hai ya kinetic jo bhi run karte hai hum bolte hai reserve mein aa gaya reserve means iske baad agar reserve mein aaya iske baad ye 10 km 15 km chalega means maximum capacity over normal value that is our reserve cardiac reserve it is the amount of blood that can be pumped by our ventricle over and above normal okay this is maximum increase the cardiac output okay, suppose agar main yahan pe resting condition hu mera cardiac output 5 liters per minute hai suppose if i am doing exercise highest intensity so how much cardiac output i can increase that is cardiac reserve my reserve capacity if suppose somebody has disease this reserve is reduced am i clear so this is expressed in percentage in healthy individual it is 300 to 400 percentage 300 percentage means 300 times or percentage this is percentage means 5 multiplied by suppose 300 divided by 100 this way you can count so you can see i can increase my cardiac output up to 15 liters per minute so this way you have to calculate don't get confused that 300 percentage how can we find 300 percentage this is the easy way why easy way because percentage always is universal suppose my cardiac output is 5 liter i can increase up to 50 somebody else cardiac output is 4 liters how much he or she can increase 4 multiplied by 300 divided by 100 so he or she can increase 12 liters per minute so this is normal okay in old age this capacity decreases to 200 to 2 percentage and athletes can raise this capacity 500 to 600 percentage okay and this is maximum during when we are performing exercise okay and minimum if the person is having disease normal value as i told you okay in non athletes we have how much car if you wish to remember this value in liters this is in normal individual adult this value is 15 to 25 liters per minute means suppose my cardiac output is 5 liters i can increase my cardiac output up to 15 liters okay and if the person is athlete okay he or she can increase it up to 20 to 40 liters per minute Okay, fine. So this is the cardiac reserve. Okay, very important terminology. Now, physiological conditions in which your cardiac output changes. As I told you, one is age. Hmm? Cardiac output is less in children, but if we calculate cardiac index, this would be same. Sometimes more in children. Okay. Second is gender. Females because they have less blood volume there. cardiac output is also <coughs> sorry also less so that is females second thing fine and third thing is diurnal variation diurnal variation means during day time okay early morning in the early morning your cardiac output is less and during the day time because we are performing activity our cardiac output increases early morning it is less and with increase in the time it or gradually during the day time it increases. then temperature if there is moderate change in the temperature it will not affect cardiac output okay? but if the temperature rises very much then that high environmental temperature increases cardiac output because there is vasodilatation more the venous return more will be the cardiac output so these are uh, physiological condition okay? these are physiological condition other physiological conditions are exercise definitely if we are performing exercise 
our heart rate increases, stroke volume also increases, so that it increases the cardiac output. Okay? When we are anxious, anxiety, excitement, they all increase sympathetic activity. So as the sympathetic activity increases, your cardiac output increases. Sympathetic activity increases cardiac output. After food intake, cardiac output increases. How? Because hmm, metabolism increases. So your cardiac output increases 30%. 30% means suppose it is 5 liters. 30% means 1.5 liters per minute. It increases. During pregnancy, because blood volume increases, as blood volume increases, your cardiac output also increases 45 to 60 percent. Okay, so this is another factor. And high altitude, as we have discussed, high altitude, there is hypoxia. Okay, because of hypoxia, decreases oxygen supply. What happens? Erythropoiesis increases, RBC production increases. And when there is RBC count increases, what happens? Increase in the blood volume. Okay? And that increases your cardiac output. Okay? So this is, these are physiological factors in which cardiac output is increased. Okay? Now, conditions that decrease cardiac output. Very important is posture. Suppose somebody is in lying down position. So, when we are standing or sitting from lying down position, our cardiac output is Why? Because when we are in the standing or sitting position, gravity pulls the blood. Because of pulling of the blood by gravity, venous return decreases. And as venous return decreases, cardiac output decreases. So, this is the effect of posture. Okay? Another cause for decrease in the cardiac output is excessive sweating. Because excessive cell sweating eases blood volume. So, your cardiac output is okay. So, these are the factors that decrease cardiac output. And conditions in which cardiac output will not change is during sleep. When we are sleeping, no much decrease in the cardiac output. And mild to moderate change in the temperature. When your ch temperature changes mild to moderate, then also your cardiac output will not change much. Now, pathological condition. Pathological, which condition affect your cardiac output? They are one is fever. If you have fever, cardiac output increases. Okay, why? Because of increase in the oxidative process. Oxygen requirement increases, the heart pumps more. Okay, that is one. Second is anemia. Anemia also increases cardiac output. Why? Why anemia increases cardiac output? Because in anemia, you have decreased hemoglobin or RBC. Okay? So what happens when RBC or hemoglobin increases? Then this hypoxia, that results in hypoxia. And hypoxia stimulates cardiac output. So your cardiac output increases. Okay? Very, very. Here, there is deficiency of vitamin B1, thymine. And this also increases heart rate and cardiac output. So, there is increase in cardiac output. Arteriovenous fistula, from blood moves from artery to the vein. And more the venous return, more will be the cardiac output. Thyroid hormone, when thyroid hormone level increases in hyperthyroidism, cardiac output increases because the metabolism Metabolisms are increased. Okay. Now, next is conditions in which cardiac output decreases. If there is arrhythmia, our heart is not properly pumping, the rhythm is disturbed, then what happens? Heart rate decreases and cardiac output also decreases. Second is congestive cardiac failure. Heart is failed. Failing heart cannot pump. When there is shock, cardiogenic shock, heart is not pumping the blood properly, in that condition also cardiac output decreases. When there is incomplete heart block, what happens here? In incomplete heart block also, all the impulses will not pass from atria to ventricle. Okay? So that also will not give efficient pumping of the blood. Efficient pumping decreases. Okay? 
then hemorrhage because of hemorrhage blood is lost blood loss and because of this blood loss there is decrease in the cardiac output okay hypothyroidism when thyroid level decrease metabolism decrease and cardiac output now let us revise all these factors increases and decreases cardiac output let us revise first physiological factors age gender diurnal variation environment exercise anxiety food intake pregnancy and altitude okay then physiological factors decrease cardiac output are posture and excessive sweating no change moderate temperature and sleep and pathological variations for increased cardiac output are fever anemia beriberi fish blood and hypothyroid okay whereas decrease in the cardiac output mainly related with the heart cardiac arrhythmia cardiac failure cardiogenic shock heart block or if the blood volume is reduced hemorrhage and hypothyroidism so these are all the cause change in the cardiac output now next important topic is regulation of cardiac output why cardiac output is regulated why is it required first of all and how is it regulated okay because suppose your output is not matching means suppose you can say right ventricular output is increased for few minutes or few seconds or few hours what happens suppose your right ventricular output is increased because right ventricle pumps in the pulmonary circulation okay so when right ventricular output is only 0.1 ml blood per beat only 0.1 ml mind this value so if it is 0.1 ml per beat how much per minute 7 ml okay so 1 minute 7 ml blood is going more in your pulmonary circuit so what happens after 3 hours multiply this with 3 okay 7 multi 7 per minute multiplied by 60 minutes multiplied by 3 hours so it would be 1260 ml this much more blood is going your in your pulmonary circulation so there is congestion and gas exchange is not possible so this is the importance of regulation of cardiac output now very important topic how it is regulated how our cardiac output is regulated regulated when you go through this question in the book you find so many confusion because even we are reading you find so many confusion so this is the easiest way i have tried to find out the regulation okay so easy way is heart and cardiac output that is regulated mainly by two mechanisms okay number one that is intrinsic regulation heart itself regulates its own output that is intrinsic okay and it is also known as heteromatric regulation heteromatric means metric means length length of the cardiac muscle changes very important word here so don't get confused intrinsic regulation is also known as heteromatric regulation and second is extrinsic outside the heart we have sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves now this sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves they are regulating heart okay so this is extrinsic regulation which is also known as homomatric why homomatric because the length of the heart will a heart muscle will not you can see here this is intrinsic control related because why length change because it is related with the venous return more will be the venous return more will be the cardiac output equal to frank starling's law we will discuss fine and extrinsic control that is outside when your nerves sympathetic or parasympathetic nerves they regulate heart rate and cardiac output and force of contraction that is extrinsic okay fine now starting with first intrinsic regulation which is also known as heteromatric regulation heteromatric means length of the cardiac muscle this this depends on preload and afterload okay now what is this preload preload is equal to easy way is equal to your venous return okay means as i told you heart is a pump how much blood comes to heart it is pumping so preload suppose your heart is having more blood okay more will be pumped this is preload 
so this preload determines the initial length of muscle fiber and we have discussed in frank starling's law what is it frank starling's law denotes that within physiological limit very important word within physiological limits okay within physiological limits force of contraction is directly proportionate to initial length of muscle fiber fine so suppose within physiological limit within physiological limit is very important word because if heart is failing a large amount of blood is coming then there is no value okay so within physiological limit more blood is coming to the heart more will be the initial length more will be the force of contraction so your end diastolic volume is your preload how much blood present in the heart at the end of diastole and it determines the force of contraction okay? so this is your intrinsic regulatory okay inside the heart we have muscle and this muscles cardiac muscles they follow frank starling's law okay and according to this this law law this is for in intrinsic mechanism cardiac muscle fibers are stretch more will be the initial length more will be the force contraction so this is first mechanism second is after load after load means suppose this is your aorta suppose blood pressure is increased so what happens heart has to pump more to pump the blood against this resistant vessel this is your after load okay fine now as i told you factors affecting end diastolic volume end diastolic volume is the volume of blood present in the heart at the end of diastole i will explain with this graph you can see suppose as i told you when your preload increases preload is equal to end diastolic volume more will be the preload more will be the stroke volume okay this way okay second thing is suppose if your after load increase aortic pressure increases so what happens stroke volume decreases less amount of blood is pumped by heart and when the stroke volume decreases what happens your end systolic volume increases means stroke volume is negatively affected negatively affects your end means stroke volume decreases and systolic volume increases and as i told you when force of contraction of the heart increases again stroke volume increases and end diastolic sorry decreases so easy way to remember when your stroke volume increases your end diastolic and systolic volume decreases this is the simple way to remember okay now there are various factors they affect your venous they are let us enumerate respiratory pump which is also known as thoracic pump second is cardiac pump heart third is the muscle pump and fourth is blood volume and five is sympathetic system we will discuss one by one starting with first respiratory pump you can see here because heart is there we have lungs also in our thoracic cage so whenever there is change in the pressure in our uh, intra thoracic cage it also affects your venous return and cardiac output which are the pressure changes i will explain at the end of expiration this pressure inside the thoracic cage is you can say that minus 2 mm of muscle but when we are inspiring inspiration is produced because of suction so this negative pressure increases it reaches to minus 5 mm of muscle so what happens when the pressure decreases from minus 2 to minus 5 minus 5 is less okay what happens less pressure is applied on your veins and arteries okay so what happens veins are distended okay so more is the venous return more will be the cardiac output so very important thing here is during inspiration more is your venous return more is the cardiac output second thing is during inspiration this is first factor to increase cardiac output second thing is what happens there is descent of diaphragm when we are inspiring so this thoracic cage expands 
so more amount of blood is accumulated here so that also results in in the cardiac output so venous return increase and increase the cardiac output and this is known as respiratory pump okay? now this mechanisms they increase venous return okay? and uh, this mechanisms operation of this mechanisms that is due to force respiration is more more further the cardiac output sorry further decrease in the uh, intrathoracic pressure and further increase in the cardiac output this is one forceful respiration one of the uh, situation second is during severe exercise also this pump is working severely okay? and what is the advantage because when we are performing exercise we require more cardiac output so that is provided by respiratory pump so this is first mechanism to regulate cardiac output by intrinsic way second very important is cardiac pump heart itself acts as a pump as i told you so it affects your venous return and it individually regulates cardiac output by two mechanisms try to remember this is been very confusing in your book two mechanisms one is visor togo and second is visor fronto what is this visor togo the name itself suggests Visor fronto means from front, turgo means from. So visor turgo here, force from behind, pushing force. Okay. So here what happens? This heart is contracting. Contraction of the heart that leads to giving force from behind. Okay. So this helps in increasing cardiac output. So this is your vice or turgo mechanism. Second is this again is affected by when Kessel effect, elastic recoil of the vessel wall, elastic recoil of vessel wall also because of elasticity, they get expanded and they get contracted. They also help the heart in this mechanism. Okay, so this is why Sertago means push from behind. That is one. Okay. Second is why Sertago means from front. There is pulling factor. So, vice of fronto means the factor which is pulling the blood from front. Front pull that attracts the blood in the veins, from the veins to the heart. Okay, force acting from the front to attract the blood from veins towards the heart. So, this way, suppose this is your heart and these are veins. So, heart because of suction, it attracts the blood. Vice of fronto. And it has two components, ventricular systolic suction and ventricular diastolic suction. What is it? Ventricular, during ventricular systole, uh, what happens? Why there is suction? Here you can see that. Uh, in the ventricular systole, what happens? There is suppose, during ventricles, when this is AV node, these are your AV node. Okay? Then ventricles, these are your ventricles. Okay? When these ventricles are in systole, what happens? Pressure increases here. So, because of increase in the pressure, it causes this bulging of this uh, AV, no, AV valve. And followed by that, when there is opening of AV valve, okay, what happens? There is peak ventricle. So, during this, sorry, during this ventricular systole, because of the Descent of the AV junction. What happens? There is decrease in the pressure in the atria. That pulls the blood. So that is one mechanism. Ventricular systolic suction. And second is ventricular diastolic suction. Here what happens? Because when ventricles are in diastole, blood is moving from ventricles are filled. Blood is moving from atria to ventricle and ventricles to the great vessel. So what happens here again intraatrial pressure decreases and that helps in the suction of the blood. So this is of frontal. So we have discussed two mechanisms. First is respiratory pump, second is cardiac pump, third is muscle pump, very important. In our limbs, we have superficial and deep veins. Suppose you can see the limb, superficial veins are visible, deep are inside. Okay? So blood is flowing from superficial to deep veins. Here you can see this way. And blood is flowing in one direction because of presence of these are known as communicating veins. Okay? And why one directional flow? Because of presence of valves are there. 
Now, what is the importance of this part? And what happens when we are walking or moving at this time? So you can see here. Suppose when you are walking or you are performing exercise, what happens? Your muscles they contract. Okay, contraction of the skeletal muscles of the limb. Because of contraction of skeletal muscle, what happens? Your deep veins are compressed because deep veins are there inside. Okay, and it increases the pressure on the valve which is proximal to it. So proximal valves are closed. Okay. But distal valve because they are superficial. And you can say distal because this muscle contracts. So distal valves are not compressed. So what happens? Blood is flowing from distal valve to the And when your muscle relaxes, what happens? Because of relaxation of muscle. Hmm, what happens because of relaxation? Again, you can see now this proximal valves they open and distal valves are closed. So the blood is squeezing towards the heart. And this mechanism helps to increase venous return when we are performing exercise or when we are walking or moving or other activities. Okay. Now there is one applied aspect that is varicose vein. What is this varicose vein? This is commonly found in the individual. Those who have the profession of prolonged standing, like teachers, like nurses, surgeons, or traffic police. Traffic police. Why? Because they have to stand for a long period of time. They are not moving. Because surgeon, when performing, suppose somebody is neurosurgeon or cardiac surgeon, he or she, he or she has to stand for. 5, 7, 10 hours till the surgery is over. What happens here? What is varicose vein? Here what happens? Because continuous standing that results in there is no movement of this muscle. No compression and no movement and no venous return increase. What happens? That this venous pressure increases because continuously blood is blood column is there in this vein. As venous pressure increases, it stretches the vein and the valves they become your non function. Valves they get damaged. Because of damage of the valve, what happens? You find this kind of tortuous veins because now the superficial veins are not moving that towards the heart, and this condition is known as varicose vein. So this is your applied. Next is blood volume. Blood volume increases cardiac output. This is definitely you can see here blood volume because how what is the mechanism when blood volume increases? Preload increases as preload increases. Stroke volume increases cardiac output also increases. This way you can say that blood volume affects cardiac. Then sympathetic system. When Sympathetic nerves are stimulated. You can see here. Sympathetic stimulation increases the tone of the blood vessel. Venous tone is increased. Okay? And because of the tone increases, venous capacity decreases. But ultimately, it also increases the force of contraction. So, venoconstriction and more the blood is coming to the heart. Along with that, it increases the force of contraction. And therefore, it increases cardiac output. Then next, as I told you, body position, as I told you, in lying down position, cardiac output is more as compared to compared to sitting and standing. Because in standing or sitting position, there is periphery, peripheral pooling of the blood. So venous return decreases. As venous return decreases, cardiac output decreases. Okay? Then comes huh, ventricular compliance. Compliance means distance between. Suppose. Your ventricles are con are compliant, means distensible. Suppose you can see here. Suppose your ventricles are normal. What happens? They can accommodate more amount of blood with less increase in the pressure. So more end diastolic volume. More will be the end diastolic volume. More will be the more will be the stroke volume and cardiac output. Now easy example I can give. Suppose if a balloon having good elasticity and other balloon having less elasticity so which balloon you can feel more air that is having more elasticity same thing if your heart is normal distensible more amount of 
and diastolic volume is accommodated. Okay? So this is the important thing, ventricular compliance. And this ventricular compliance, this sensibility is reduced in pathological condition. Like for example, suppose this is your heart. Outside, there is, there is pericardial fluid. So if pericardial effusion is there, in case of pericardial effusion, there is decrease in the ventricular distance. And as the ventricular distance decreases, what happens? Cardiac output decreases. Okay? Other pathological conditions, suppose if you have myocardial infarction, okay? heart is having infarcted tissue. So these tissues are fibrotic and they are not functioning, non-functioning. So in this condition also heart cannot pump properly. So you can say that compliance decreases, compliance decreases, then diastolic volume decreases, cardiac output decreases. And this Cardiac tamponade that is equal to pericardial effusion. When pericardial fluid increases, it compresses the heart and it decreases and diastolic volume. Okay? So this, this is the pathology as well as your this I have already discussed. I am not going in detail. Clinical significance that is Frank Starling's. So this is all about your first mechanism, intrinsic regulation, which is also known as heteromatric regulation. Second one is homomatric regulation. Homomatric means heart muscle will not change. In homomatric regulation, myocardial contractility is increased without change in the initial length of muscle fiber. Initial muscle fiber length will not change. Okay. So here, as we have discussed, there is a role of sympathetic. There is positive inotropic effect because of the sympathetic stimulation. Positive inotropic effect means sympathetic they cause increase in the force of contraction. Okay, force of contraction increases, so heart rate as well as uh, cardiac output both are increased. Okay, fine. So and. Opposite is also true. If parasympathetic are stimulated, what happens? Your heart rate and force of contraction and cardiac output all are decreased. And if sympathetic are inhibited, then also the same thing. There is decrease in the heart rate and force of contraction. This is about your cardiac output and how it is regulated. This is this we have already discussed role of heart rate. I'm not going in detail of this. So this is all about class regarding cardiac output and its regulation uh, thank you thanks for watching if you like my video you can like it you can share with all your friends and you can subscribe our channel on academy thank you